the study of actual usage of FT8 in both the USA and Japan, starting now. Hey guys, welcome to Ham Radio 2.0. If this is your first time here to join us, please click on the subscribe button below so that you can keep up with all the videos that we post on this channel. Anything that's new in amateur radio. Today is the next episode from the 2018 Tapper Digital Communications Conference given to us by Masa, who is a JR call sign. He's JR1AQN. And he talks about the actual usage of FT8 and some statistics and numbers that he put together for both usage on amateur radio in the USA and in Japan. I hope you enjoy the episode. So next up, I'd like to introduce Masa Meida. Yes. Okay. JR1AQN. So it's nice to have a little DX in the room. So he has <laughs> done a study, and he would like to tell us about it in his and the actual usage of FT8 in the U.S. and Japan. Masa is also you write for CQ Japan. Yes. Okay. So um, this is very fascinating, and the study that he's done, he'd like to share it with us. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, thank you for taking your time, everybody. <coughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my, name is <coughs> sorry. my name is Masaki Maeda. Please call me Masa. And uh, my call sign is uh, JR1 AQN J, uh, J1. And I'm operating in uh, W2 stroke JR1 AQN is, uh, using my J call sign in uh, New York. <clears throat> New York, the W2, right? I belong to the JRL, the Band Amateur Radio League, and today I would like to speak about the study on actual usage of FT8 uh, in the US and uh, Japan. So comparing with uh, Japan and the US usage and the <coughs> use of FT8. Okay. Uh, before the entering to the presentation, Please let me know some small uh, questionnaire. Are you working in uh, uh, PSK 31? Okay. How about a JT 65? Oh, thank you. How about a FT8? Okay, thank you very much. Almost uh, 30 or 40 percent are using the, such kind of the HF digital, right? Now, FT8 is almost one year before that it's the <coughs> invented the dep in, and R and D, uh, but it's uh, going down, going up very dramatically now. Okay, <coughs> this is my abstract. Uh, this study based on a demonstration of JT65 and FT8 at the 17 and 18 convention in. A <coughs> Mm, Dayton. And uh, uh, some questionnaire I give to the FT8 user. And uh, <coughs> uh, some study reveals a difference in usage frequency between the JT, uh, Japan and the US and the RF output also. We found that many users are spending most of their QSA time, almost a DXR, on FT8 and communicating with many DXCC uh, entities. Okay, first I would like to introduction. At the convention, we have a demonstration of JT65 in 2017 and real-time QSO of FT8 2018. Uh, this was not transmitted by directly from the convention venue. Uh, was remotely operated with a transceiver at the shack in my New York house. And uh, show with uh, figure one. Uh, this one shows a remote system in invention, uh, just using a, a team viewer application between the PC and PC. Uh, we don't need uh, some noise, uh, voice or uh, sound, right? Uh, the <coughs> I can control from the uh, invention booth to the my New York station. Uh, the, through the internet, uh, mobile internet router. The problem is uh, afternoon of the convention, the traffic in the cellular network is a combustion, 
congestion. <laughs> Sometimes the throwing, throwing the, some uh, action, but it, it, it's okay. And th this is uh, the photo of our booth. It's a joint booth between uh, JARL and uh, our uh, JTDX, the FT8 this, uh, promotion. And this is uh, some uh, FT8 operation here. Next uh, neighborhood is the DARC, you know, the uh, Germany. They drink a beer every time, uh, two days. <laughs> I'm very surprised. Uh, this. <laughs> they, uh, they bring uh, some, uh, a lot of beer in uh, Kura, and uh, they drink every, every time. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, th this photo was uh, taken by QS QST magazine, and uh, we get uh, almost 500 signatures from uh, attendees. It is a very uh, <coughs> enthusiasm from Hanbenshon attendee in both 2017 and uh, 2018. And uh, uh, this uh, presentation is a uh, focus on uh, 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 spread to those unfamiliar with FT8. But for the purpose of this study, a questionnaire was given to FT8 users. The following summary of the studies. The data of Japan is based on the Facebook and the JT65 mailing list. Almost uh, uh, parameters and the uh, number of sampling is USA is N equal 80, almost 80. And uh, Japan is uh, almost N equal 100. Okay, I'm moving to the questionnaire to content. Before the entering the co contents, the, I would like to show the, some geographic distribution, the attendee of Hanbenshon 2018. Uh, Almost 80 percent from the uh, United States, and the Canada almost 7 percent, and any small number of from the Oceania and the South America, EU. The Japan is almost 6 percent. So it's a bigger than other areas, but uh, maybe half of them are uh, working, uh, operating in U.S. like me. But as a result, 86% come from the North America. This uh, questionnaire is almost a represent of the U.S. Uh, harm usage. Uh, this is uh, RF power, first question, RF power when you are operating FT8. It's very interesting, it seems. The, the shown as an unexpected result that the number of high power stations beyond 100 watt is rather than higher in Japan. Orange is a Japan number, almost percentage of the 100 people. And the blue is a Hanbenshon, is a almost 80 percent. It represents to the uh, U.S. people. I imagine maybe one kilowatt or more is from U.S. And the Japan is a very small one, but the result is a different one. The over 100 watt is a high percentage of Japan, from Japan. The, in Japan, the, the, the result, the interfer interference from the neighborhood high power station causes a serious, a little bit serious problem. Maybe the while FT8 on air station are still on the rise, increasing, the harmonious consensus about appropriate RF power is required. My sense is almost 50 watt or so is uh, some appropriate uh, percentage. And the second question for a questionnaire is the FT8 favorite band. Yeah, it is expected in Japan and the United States, uh, 40 meter 
and the 20 meter is the most common. But the difference in the use of WA work band, WA RC band, especially 30 meter, is uh, remarkable. The 30 meter is uh, very frequent in the uh, United States, but Japan is not so big one. The 20 meter and the 40 meter is almost the same. The fact that there are many high band is overall maybe an influence of the housing situation in Japan. You, need, you know, the low band requires a large antenna. The U.S. ham is very happy to have a big antenna in your property, right? <laughs> uh, the unpopularity of less than 106 meter band, the D here is a zero in uh, Japan. But uh, popularity in the six meter is uh, Japan, is the range is uh, higher, right? Uh, well, of course, one thing that we have to consider is the 30 meter and the 20 meter is only allowed for class one, class two license in Japan. It's uh, one of the uh, reasons why the, this, this graph it shows. Okay, so the next one is uh, FT8 percentage in your on air time. Uh, both Japan and the U.S., FT8 takes up the majority of QSO time. The, as again, Japan is orange, and the hamvention, it means uh, some U.S. ham, is a little bit flat. The Japan is a very peaky to 80 to 99 percent. That's why I noticed that many attendees did not think of FT8 as a special mode in the United States. It's a kind of the tool for DXing. The, they are very flat because they think sometimes the CW, SSV, or FM. Of course, one of them is the FT8. But in Japan, FT8 is a very <laughs> high percentage for uh, QSO time. Uh, in Japan, FT8 has a devoted file following full almost exclusivity use of FT8. Next one. Uh, how long are you operating FT8? Uh, you know that FT8 was invented almost 2017, just one year ago in the United States. Uh, for example, it cannot be used without understanding English. This is, uh, you know, the Japanese language is very far from the English. But this is significant because the figure shows half of more Japanese FT8 users have been using FT8 since its creation. But it's very cutting edge. They have very, very high sensitivity for this new technology like this. Uh, orange is Japan. The blue is Hanbei-shan, uh, uh, means uh, some North America. Okay, next one is what is a FT8 biggest advantage? Number one is QSO is shorter than JT65. You know the JT65 only the uh, trans or receive is a uh, one minute for one period, right? And FT8 at the 15 second. They answered faster than JT65. And I think this is a very uh, reasonable at the boost response between uh, 2017 and 2018. Last year, 2017, there are many opinions that we do not use because JT65 is uh, too slow. Everybody says uh, something. But they understand, I think, the benefit of JT65 is a low uh, high SN or something, but the length of QSO was a barrier. But once entering to FT8, the length of QSO was uh, reduced by FT8. Many more harms entering this mode. 
Another interesting result is that users in both Japan and the U.S. listed no language barrier. Here, no language barrier. It is an unexpected result for me because we Japanese or non-English speaker is considering this, this no language barrier. But I don't think you are not sincerely this one. But uh, interesting is that both English speaker and non-English speaker the, the cycle that this no language barrier as an FDA advantage. It means that non-native English speaker I had thought language barrier as issue the only we expected. But it seems FDA lead to a better, more mistake-free, mistake-free experience for both sides. That you cannot find, get uh, some number or a call sign. It's a kind of no, no mistake free. That you know, mistake free is a very good uh, future for FDA, both English speaker or non English speaker. Right? And many other, the, for example, uh, many station operating or auto logging, you have nothing to do. Uh, just logging from the uh, software, right? Okay, how many, next one, uh, how many DXCC entity you worked by FTA? Although it is a new mode, just only one year, but FTA has shown this figure. I think that the wonderful that there are users getting result of more than DXCC entity is rather than uh, 200 in both Japan and the United States here. For example, I myself live in the suburban of New York and I operate it with a very simple dipole antenna set in the backyard. It's a hidden one, right? Uh, so without JT65 FT8, it had been uh, impossible to communicate with foreign countries, just a dipole or a barefoot uh, TS590. Okay, that yeah, is a very remarkable number. Okay, last one is the uh, software you are using for FT8. You know the WSJTX. It's uh, invented by K K1JT, is uh, very famous. It's uh, almost 80% use of uh, this software. But you know, the JTDX uh, improves this uh, algorithm. Uh, it it uh, uses almost 20% of the users, uh, both in uh, Japan and the US. Okay, so that's all I have. Thank you very much. Examine the usage situation of FT8 mode in the US and Japan to understand the experience of users in both countries. In co comparison to last year, that we have two, two years uh, demonstration there in uh, Hanbenshan, there are more enthusiasm about FT8, and it is no longer seen as a minor mode. The, actually, the 2017, last year, we show a ZT65, someone says, why you have a demonstration? It is only 2% of population in the United States. But now, maybe uh, FT8 is a very common in the United States, right? Uh, the increase in the popularity also means that questions such as appropriate RF output must be discussed. Because I think uh, you you may understand that Japan is a very high population density in uh, Tokyo or Osaka. That you can find out very easily the hammer antenna in Tokyo. <laughs> that, that means that there's such kind of the problem that caused from the interference between us very close the, the uh, hams. I would like to contribute to the continued development of FT8 and uh, such kind of the, some social uh, uh, <clears throat> discussion or uh, the study in the future.
Thank you very much for taking your time. The, please have some. Thank you. Thank you. For a question. Do we have a question? Do we have questions? So it seems like it's no longer a minor mode, right? Yes. <laughs> so do you see it continuing on, or do you see it as a fad that's going to fade out at when the next new mode comes along? Uh, yeah, actually, the I heard from the next version is coming to next one more enhanced mode, FT8 Plus, is coming to next uh, maybe the, uh, one or two months. It's so, so the, the 13 character is limited. There's more 15 or so. Uh, some improvement with uh, expanding to the uh, more and more, not only for US, but also some Japan. Okay. Do you have any comments on the FT8 DX mode? Uh, DX mode, uh, it's a... Uh, 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 position mode, yes. I love this one uh, because uh, a lot of the number of QSO is made by it for uh, some position or something, right? But sometimes the, in Japan, there are some regulation problems that we might cannot use this kind of the, yeah, there's no co uh, conclusion now yet. But the, in the US or all over the world, it can use in the page show. Okay. okay. Hi. Yeah. In, in the United States, acceptance of FT8 in the general community has been a little bit controversial because there's some people who feel it changes the game mm -hmm. in certain ways they don't particularly like. What is it like in Japan? Um, you've shown very high acceptance of it. Culturally, is it, is it, is it, do you have similar debates about whether it should be as popular as it is or as well used as it is? I'm just curious. Good question. Uh, for, uh, my, my opinion is the four very famous DXR, big antenna, high power. They are not familiar to the FDA. <laughs> yeah. And on the other hand, some very majority, they have no big antenna and high power. But they, for example, they are not familiar to the foreign language. The, they are very interested in entering this world because, as I say, no language barrier is a very uh, contribute to such kind of the peoples, right? The, I heard from the Hanbenshon, the, the resellers of the, the uh, uh, Transiba or something. How do you feel this one? Is it good for our sales or not? Well? It's good for sales because young people are entering to the HF again because it is very easy. No big antenna, no big power, but something easy to enter. I'm on the yes money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the same as in Japan. But on the other hand, as I say, everybody, everybody uses FT8. There are some the interference between the very cross, right? It is uh, some big problem in Japan. Okay, thank you. Any, Any other, other questions? questions? Okay, just a moment. Hi, I was part of the group that um, attempted to use FT8 for field day in an organized way. We had a practice session and then a bunch of us used it on field day and we had a, a great time. I was wondering if, does that line up with the, the DX mode that you're talking about? Is that the same, uh, or is that it's something uh, else? some regular mode. Yeah. No. Oh, okay, it's different. Yeah, different one. The, the, the position mode is a very focus on the position, right? The, they use uh, some maybe five, five stations, one, one QSO. But now it's, it is uh, some uh, questionnaire. The, before, the some the, uh, position mode coming. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It's a very regular one. Thank you. Any, Any other, other question or uh, questions? comment? Well, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much for taking your time. Thank you.